think the character Thor resonates so much with audiences around the world? Why do I think the character of Thor resonates with audiences around the world? You know, I think because he has evolved over the years, much like all of us, you know? There's a, a growth uh, within each film and a new experience. Um, and he has learnt things about himself and changed and matured. Um, and that's the journey we're all on, isn't it? It's a journey of self-discovery. Explain the reflective nature of Thor as we find him in Thor and Love and Thunder and how his version of Thor continues the character's growth since we first met him. So how he grows with the character. Yeah, the reflective nature of Thor. I think, um, look, all of us, you know, um, self-reflection, we look in the mirror and we think, who are we, who should we, we, we be, who do we want to be? Um, there's a constant question we all have faced, as is Thor. And um, I think what he's learned over the years is to stay true to who he is. And although he wants quieter moments and, and wishes for peace and serenity, you know, the universe calls upon him for his support, you know, and he is in servitude of, of others. And uh, when the call is made, he answers and off he goes. Natalie Portman is back. This time, joining the ranks of the MCU superheroes. Describe Thor's reaction to her newfound power and his lingering feeling for her. And Natalie Portman is back, and this time as the mighty Thor, which, you know, I mean, imagine seeing your ex-girlfriend, um, where, where there was the untold story, unfinished business. There was love there that was never truly experienced. Um, all of that comes flooding into Thor's um, being and experience in that moment. And I think he's intimidated. I think he's, he's in wonder and fascination, but most of all, he's impressed and, uh, and he's in love when he sees her. Natalie Portman did the most amazing job uh, playing the Mighty Thor, and I can't wait for people to see it. Can you introduce the villain in this film? Who plays him and what fans can expect? The villain in this film, uh, played by Christian Bale, he plays Gore, the God Butcher, and uh, it has rated, rated as the highest uh, tested villain in the MCU. And uh, man, he was impressive. The first time he walked on set, um, I was blown away, I was intimidated. Um, but what was most impressive is underneath the villainous nature of what he portrayed on screen, there was a a vulnerability too. There was an accessibility there through the, uh, the the nuanced empathy, you know, that he had that was, and also was asked of an audience. Um, you don't agree with what he's doing, but you kind of understand his anger and frustration and, and his motivation. Talk about Russell Crowe as Zeus and how he was welcomed to the world of God. Russell Crowe as Zeus. Um, hilarious. What I really appreciated was the fact that uh, he came in and was self-deprecating and, 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 and kind of made a fool of himself in the most wonderful way. Um, he had such a beautiful sense of humor with it. Um, the self-deprecating nature that, that he had was, uh, was infectious amongst all of us. And, and to, you know, I think the trapping would have been to come in and play it gladiator-esque that we've seen before and loved, but he really turned that on its head and did something very unique and fresh. Can you talk about working within the volume versus green screen? What is it and how does it help with your performance? Yeah, the volume's really interesting. You know, it's, it's, it's a uh, 360 uh, LCD screen, basically, and it's far more immersive than working traditional blue screen, green, green screen. You know, you have the environment projected on those screens and it is reflected back upon you. Um, you, you know, instead of having to imagine what you're looking at in the environment, it's, it's right there on the screen. So uh, it is more immersive and um, it makes for, a, I think, a more fun and vivid experience. Taika Waititi returns to the helm of the film. What makes him the right director for and how do you work 
Yeah, Taika Waititi, you know, since Ragnarok really changed the game. And uh, both he and I discussed this at length about doing something very different and something unique. And um, he continues to, to push the envelope and raise the bar and, and keep audiences guessing, keep them on their toes. You know, he, he's collaborative and fun and chaotic and exciting. And uh, that's what this film is, you know, and it, it embodies the most adventurous spirit um, that, is, that is needed to be a Marvel Cinematic Universe film. Picture. How do you think the character Thor resonates so much with audiences around the world? I think Thor, I mean, I guess uh, I only learned this recently that Thor has the most standalone movies of anyone in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which means he, he really connects with audiences. And I think I think he connects with audiences because he's the kind of guy you want to be, but he's also a kind of guy that feels relatable in, in, in some weird way. I mean, when we first met him early on, he was sort of this fish out of water, which I think we all can feel as humans. Um, and then he's just kind of like a goofy, lovable guy that I feel like you kind of want to sit down and, and hang out with. He's he's valuable, he's not perfect, but he has a has a big heart and he's always trying. And I think that's something that we that we all can sort of know and understand and love. Why do you think films fans love Valkyrie so much? And what is the key for you to bringing her to life? Why? I don't know. That is, I do, that's cool. If fans love Valkyrie a lot, that is cool. And I don't know why, but I love it. And thank you for loving her. I think she's fantastic. Um, and, you know, I think she's, she's again, sort of like Thor. I think she's imperfect, but I think she has a really, really good heart and she's, a, a lovable person. Um, and I think when you first meet her, especially you really want her to love herself. And I think that's sometimes something that you can feel endeared to in a person, kind of when they don't actually know how great they are. And, and when they begin to understand that and love that, they become even better people. And I think that's what you want for Valkyrie. Um, and for me, I, I just can't believe, I'm, I'm, I feel so incredibly lucky to get to make these these movies, like every day when I show up to make these movies, I, I kind of r really and truly feel like I'm pinching myself. And so I think that makes me just want to be better and, and serve the character more and uh, not let the fans down and not let my co-stars down. And, and so it's just been a pleasure to get to do that. We find King Joffrey fulfilling her role as King to the new Asgard in the new film. But it's not as exciting as her former life. Can you explain? <laughs> yeah. So we find King, you know, we find Valkyrie at the beginning of this film as, as King of New Asgard. And, and she's so proud to be that because she loves her people so intensely. But, you know, she has spent her whole life, which represents thousands and thousands of years, as a career soldier and being a part of, um, you know, a, a group and a, a cistern of fighters. And I think she's really missing that. She's missing a sense of adventure. She's missing that camaraderie. Um, and what is exciting is she kind of finds that again in the adventure of Thor, Love and Thunder, and the bad guy that they have to beat um, in, in Gore, the God Butcher. But she also finds sisterhood in, in Mighty Thor. And, um, and that's really satisfying. And then I think you get to see her really figure out the kind of king that she wants to be. And, and I really think that she's a, she's a great king. How did you train to prepare for the film? So I trained a lot to prepare for this film, particularly because I was coming out of um, you know, the, the height of the pandemic. And I think like many people across the world, we were like eating our feelings and spending a lot of time on the couch and at home. <laughs> so I had a lot of uh, a lot of training to do to get ready, but I had help. I had an incredible trainer named Reginald Brantley, or Reggie the Machine, who's trained a lot of, um, you know, bodybuilders. And so on a really just strict regimen of just working really hard with a lot of cardio and weight training and um and a lot of diet which is my least favorite thing because i like to just eat anything i ever want to eat but um i did i had to not do that for for a while but it's really cool to get really strong and and i think one of the pleasures of of doing these films is you get to be tasked to try to get in really good shape and and apart from the fact that it looks like cool to have 
muscles, you know, like Chris Hemsworth, you also can feel, you know, really strong and, and you wake up in less pain and you have more energy. And, and that was certainly nice, especially after um, not, not feeling great for about two years on my couch. Describe working with Chris Hemsworth and what he brings to Thor. You know, working with Chris Hemsworth is like a, is like a warm fire, is like an afternoon picnic. It's like a walk in the park. It's like a cup of tea. It's like, <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I love Chris. I really like Chris. I love working with Chris. Chris and I like to make fun of each other. We like to make each other laugh. Um, our families are bonded now. Our parents like each other. I, I think we'll just merge the Thompsons and the Hem, Hemsworth, the, the Hems Tomps, the Tomps, the Tompsworth, I think is what we're aiming for. I love his wife. I love his children. He has donkeys. I like them too. And, um, and I just want to, I just want to hang on his cape, you know, both literally and figuratively. Um, because look, he's so cool. What is it like working with director Taika Waititi? Working with director Taika Waititi is uh, like a tight, it's like a tightrope. It's like a uh, Russian roulette. It's like a word game. It's like Scrabble. It's like organized chaos. It is like um, theater. And it is like an amusement park. It's very fun and there's lots of music and he's really inventive and lovely and a maniac. And I am I feel really grateful that we get to make these films with him because I think they're really weird, singular films and I'm not sure that anyone else would make a, a film, you know, like, like this, like this one that we made. So I feel really grateful. Mighty Thor, jo yeah, Mighty Thor joins a group of female superheroes alongside you, King Joffrey, and many others. Can you talk about working with Natalie and showing her the superhero ropes? Why are these powerful women characters such an important part of the MCU? Well, working with Natalie is such a joy. We had made a film together many years ago. It was a very different film, but also a film that, um, you know, had a lot of women and, and powerful women working on an assignment together. And she and I, during that time, were talking about how rare it is that we all get to work together, that typically there might be one or two women on a movie, if you're even lucky to have two. Um, and, you know, we're friends outside of making movies together. And so I think getting to do this. And funnily, when we made that movie together many years ago, I was about to come and do Thor Ragnarok and so I was training for that and I was asking her well, what's it like working on Marvel movies like do you have any tips and she was like yeah but I don't know I was never a superhero and so then for her to come in and now be a superhero and she's like got any tips and I'm like this is so funny it's like it, it felt like we really came full circle and and also to get to like be in the gym together and and getting strong together and getting to make this film is really such a dream come true and and um it was so fun to get to watch her inhabit the 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 spirit of mighty thor to the marvel cinematic universe thank you how do you feel about joining this club of superheroes and villains i feel very good about joining that club why do you think the character thor resonates so much with audiences around the world well Marvel has quite a few characters that resonate very well, don't they? But, you know, I've only seen him. I've only read about him, obviously, you know, the old Norse mythology. Um, but I've only seen him uh, with, with Chris playing him in Ragnarok and, and in this one, in Love and Thunder. I haven't seen the others. And uh, so you got an actor who's born to play Thor. Who else could do that, you know? He's a beast of a man, but one of the kindest men you'll ever meet and just kills it. He is magnificent as this character. And, uh, and I think uh, uh, my understanding is, you know, Ragnarok and this one uh, uh, really brought a good uh, 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 sense of humor um, uh, to the world, which Taika does beautifully with Chris. They're a great duo. You know, and his comedy, 
but it's uh, it's really moving as well. That's the thing with Love and Thunder that I found when I watched it. I'm like, oi, this is uh, this is far more emotional than I'd ever imagined it could be. And Taika's great at that, the, the, the comedy and the tragedy together. Who do you portray in Thor, Love and Thunder? What is he like? And what's the key to playing him? I don't know what the key to playing him is, but it, he's, uh, he's Gore the God Butcher. Uh, so it kind of tells you what he's up to. And um, he's not a very nice fella. What is the best part of playing a villain? That it's easy. It's the easiest job. It's easy playing a villain because everyone's fascinated with the villain. Playing the hero, that's the toughest job. Describe the process necessary to achieve Gore's terrifying look. Well, the process is that you need brilliant special effects makeup artists. Um, because I would say we chose to go that direction, but I actually arrived thinking that we were doing CGI and I would just have to stick on a few dots and suddenly I was going, wait, why am I being called four hours before everyone else? What's up with that? And then I learned, ah, oh, I must have missed the conversation where it was decided it was prosthetics instead. But what it takes is crazy talented special effects people who are wonderful collaborators who are equally responsible as, as me in uh, creating this character. Uh, Adam Johansson and uh, Carla and Emily, who we spent, we, we started at four hours each morning and then got it down to about three and a half and then about an hour and a half uh, in the uh, evening, getting it all off. Uh, as well, and uh, created the character like that. Talk about working with director Taika Waititi. Uh, Taika is a unique individual, which you need in any director. You're looking for a, a new and interesting point of view, and he he certainly has that. He's a he's a funny bastard, and he um, and he, he uh, and he did a lot funnier stuff. Than, than was allowed to be in the film, in my opinion. But we must remember we're making a family-oriented film. We did a lot scarier stuff and weirder, creepier stuff as well. Um, but that's the nature of film. A lot of that ends up on the cutting room floor. But he's got a, a, a wonderful, he's a real artist and um, he's able to have this, this great sense of humor but also wonderful sincerity as well. And it's actually a really beautiful film, Love and Thunder, because it's funny as hell, and it's, it's, uh, it's very moving as well. And what about the other key cast members, Chris Hemsworth and- Dynamite, Adam. you know, I mean, what a cast. Such, such talent with, with Chris, who's just a wonderful bloke and just, you know, uh, uh, just sort of humiliating to be around him constantly. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and, and we're so welcoming and inviting and, you know, just, just a good, 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 good guy. Really, really wonderful actor. And, uh, Natalie Portman and Tessa Thompson, who are just fantastic, um, as well. Taika really created a, just a really, really, really good cast and everybody else who I'm not mentioning as well. I got to work with Peter Dinklage. That's not in the final film, but I got to work with him. He's fantastic. I got to work with Jeff Goldblum. He's not in the final film either. As you see, lots of stuff ends up on the cutting room floor, even though it is beautiful, brilliant stuff. Can you explain how Thor, Love and Thunder is multifaceted? A comedy, love story, and action adventure with relatable themes? Uh, yes, um, uh, because it's Taika at the helm. And, and there's very few people who know how to balance and juggle uh, uh, all of that. And with such a massive palette and massive bloody budget, um, which is uh, a task in itself, knowing how to do that. Um, so he, he's, he's done an incredible job um, uh, uh, with it. Why do you think the character Thor resonates so much with audiences around the world? I think Thor resonates because Chris Hemsworth is just someone that you're interested in in watching and seeing grow over the years. I mean, he's just he's just so charismatic and such a good actor and and such a good sense of humor too. Like you're just completely entertained all the time. 
How is Thor, Love and Thunder, a love story as much as it is an action adventure? And why do you think Thor's relationship with Jane Foster means so much to audiences? I think that um, Taika was able to create this very, very particular um, genre that was able to mix things that you never could imagine would mix, like this really wacky out there humor with really heartfelt emotional depth to, you know, romance to action to even horror elements. And he just has a kind of um, imagination and sensibility that makes all of that work together. And it's amazing. Describe how Jane Foster joins the ranks of the superheroes in Thor Love and Thunder. Well, it's it's an amazing um, opportunity that I was given to have Jane become the mighty Thor and um, have this kind of combination between being human and being a superhero and how each influences the other. What did you have to do to prepare to play Mighty Thor? Um, of course, I, I read the comic books of the Mighty Thor and talked to Taika um, a lot about, you know, how how we might bring her to to screen. Um, and then it was really a process too of just being open to anything on set because Taika is so spontaneous and really likes to invent in the moment. And most of the time the script is just thrown away and you're just inventing as you go. And so a lot of it has to do with kind of just coming to work with a very open mentality and like not trying to control what you're doing and just be free to to whatever happens. Describe the relationship between Jane and Thor in this film. She brings newfound confidence to their exchanges, yes? I think that, um, you know, Jane has the perspective of, you know, her own life challenges. And I think that, you know, it gives her definitely a different way of interacting with Thor. Um, and also I think, reuniting after knowing someone 10 years ago and having had this history, you know, we we revisit those relationships in different ways when we have the perspective of time too. Describe working with Chris Hemsworth and what he brings to Thor. Chris is just so incredible um, because he's, he's, he's the hardest working person um, I've met and he's so talented and he's so kind. He's just like always good to everyone, always um, pro so professional, so funny and just like really it's it's remarkable when you see someone who is just a better version of who he already started as a great person and just has only become more so over the years um, despite, you know, the trappings of, of all the success he's had, um, it's its only, you know, only deepened his, his work and his personality. What is it like working with director Taika Waititi? Taika is so fun. He makes every moment, like he's just committed to always being spontaneous, always creating a, a fun, creative environment and um, it's it's just a completely different experience to be on his set. And he's also very kind, like his humor is really extraordinary because it's never at anyone's expense, um, ever. And he it's just creates a very safe environment to try anything uh, because you know, like he's, he's always like embracing. Mighty Thor joins a group of female superheroes in the MCU alongside Tessa Thompson's King Valkyrie and many others. Can you talk about working with Tessa and how these characters are an important part of the MCU? Well, Tessa's Valkyrie is is probably my favorite uh, of all the superheroes, and I like wish she. I, I wish I'm looking forward to her whole film. Um, and it was extraordinary to get to work together because we had worked together on Annihilation right before she did Thor Ragnarok. And we stayed friends and, and like have done so much together um, personally. And then to come to set 
together and have a friend there already and have that rapport and have that familiarity was was extraordinary. And then, of course, to work alongside her in her her brilliance and her humor and her creativity was was so fun. I mean, our scenes together, like my favorites in the, in the film. And I feel like, you know, my my love for her is 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 is, you know, eternal. <laughs> Well, I think Thor resonates more now with uh, with uh, the Ragnarok movie um, that we did, and also now with Love and Thunder because we're giving him more human problems, more relatable problems. Um, you know, let's face it, you can't really relate to a space Viking who's thousands of years old and uh, is basically a zillionaire who lives in space. Uh, so you've got to give these characters uh, things that we've all experienced, and and in this film, I think uh, we can relate to him more than ever, where he's lost. He's trying to find purpose, and uh, he, luckily, by the end of the film, uh, he finds that purpose. How would you describe your approach to Thor? My approach to Thor was to create a film that's fun and energetic and adventurous, but also emotional. And I really wanted to concentrate on this idea of love and what love means to Thor, and you know, and whether or not that's the thing he's searching for is this idea of, of loving someone and being loved. Explain the reflective nature of Thor as we find him in Thor, Love and Thunder, and how this version of Thor continues the character's growth since we first met him. So we find Thor in a very reflective, meditative um, position at the beginning of the film. He's trying to find himself. He's... Uh, He's looking internally, he's doing a lot of searching, like a lot of us do when you know, we feel lost, we suddenly turn to um, crystals and meditation to try and figure our stuff out. And uh, it's the same with Thor in this. He, you know, we wanted to create this idea that he's going through a midlife crisis and you know, he's, after years of saving planets and saving other people, he hasn't really left anything for himself. And it's about him finding the, the way to, to find purpose. Natalie Portman is back, this time joining the ranks of MCU superheroes. Describe the character's transformation in the film and how Natalie made it happen. Uh, so Natalie Portman is now back in the MCU. She's back in the Thor franchise and in a bigger, better, bolder way. And it's, it's extremely exciting because she's now the mighty Thor. Um, she's no longer Thor's girlfriend the scientist in Albuquerque. She's now the mighty Thor who has the hammer and she's got the cape and the armor and she can fly and she can, she's wielding Mjolnir and she can harness lightning. I mean, she's an incredible character, super strong and it's great to see Natalie. It's great to see a, a female superhero all the time, it's great, and, but to see one so powerful and, and really dominating a lot of the, the storyline and really being a, you know, an equal presence with uh, Thor is a great thing to see. Describe Thor's reaction to her newfound power and his lingering feelings for her. Yeah, so when Thor, when Thor and Val, when, when Thor and Jane meet after years of being apart and years of not talking, um, she's on the battlefield and she's dressed as the mighty Thor and she's got her powers and she's doing amazing things with the hammer. She can wield the hammer in a way that Thor never could. And Thor's reaction, uh, apart from the surprise and the shock at seeing someone holding his hammer, is really more um, focused on that his ex-girlfriend and he hasn't seen her for a long time and maybe this is the thing he's been looking for to fill that hole in his life, the thing that might give him purpose. Can you introduce the villain in this film? Who plays him and what fans can expect? The villain in this film is played by Christian Bale, and the villain's name is Gore the God Butcher. And he comes from a run of comics uh, from uh, Marvel. From uh, uh, It's called The God Butcher. Oh, wait, the character's called The God Butcher. And he he's probably one of the more sympathetic villains that uh, they've had in the MCU. And he's very um, formidable and... He's, I mean, essentially, he's, uh, you know, he, he's a very scary, he might be the scariest villain 
they've had. Um, but he's sympathetic because he's dealing with uh, issues that, uh, without giving it away, you understand where his anger and his drive comes from. How has life changed for Valkyrie? Valkyrie. Let me try this again. I said it right, but um, how has life changed for Valkyrie, and how does she feel about that? Describe Tessa Thompson's performance in this film. Tessa Thompson is back as Valkyrie, and she's now King Valkyrie. She's ruling over New Asgard in Norway, and you know, they're making their best uh, attempt to integrate into Earth society, and they've made a little tourism uh, town out of, uh, out of that little part of Norway, and they've got a thriving industry, and Valkyrie is overseeing all of this. She's got new responsibilities. However, she's also a career soldier. You know, she's a professional fighter, and that's really the life that she's used to, and so she's now in a bureaucratic position where she's just doing you know a lot of admin and a lot of uh, uh, meeting a lot of delegates from other countries and stuff and business meetings and and for her you know it's really cool to see the character like that he's dealing with this stuff and being very responsible for you know for the first time in a long time but also still you know her heart is in the battle and going on adventures and then she uh, does get to go on the adventure who is Korg, and how does the actor behind him bring him to life? Korg is, um, Korg is a, a fantastic character in the film. He's uh, made of rocks, and he's played by one of the greatest actors I've ever worked with, uh, Taika Waititi. And, um, wow, well, what can I say about Taika as an actor? You know, he's uh, often late, doesn't learn his lines, um, so that's very frustrating. But he, he means well, and that's why I give him lots of takes to get it right. Talk about Russell Crowe as Zeus and how he was welcomed to the world of gods. Russell Crowe, um, you know, one of the finest actors um, ever to grace the silver screen, uh, is someone that I've admired for many years. I think I've seen Master and Commander about 60 times. And uh, Gladiator, probably 100. And he comes into the film playing Zeus, uh, the Greek god. I shouldn't have to explain that. Uh, but he's, um, and he's just an amazing force, an amazing presence. And you know, he's kind of like the overlord of all the gods. And he just brings a real sort of, uh, just a real like, weight to that part of the film, and uh, and it's also fun. He's uh, you know it's being it's Russell Crowe being a bit cheeky. Describe the music in Thor: Love and Thunder, both song and score, and how both support and elevate the storytelling. The music in Thor: Love and Thunder, um, well, it's very eclectic, and yeah, the influences that we were listening to when we were in pre-production and throughout the editing as well. There's a lot of like kind of classic '80s rock, and but yeah, we, that's why we went straight for Guns N' Roses, and we're using a bunch of their songs. And I've loved Guns N' Roses since I was very young, and it's uh, and it's just such an honor to be able to include their music in this film. And what, coupled with that, we have you know, an amazing score by Michael Giacchino, who did you know, done a lot of the Marvel films, and um, he's you know one of the best out there, and. It just helps to create a wonderful tone that you know switches between the emotion and also the adventure and the uh, overall over the topness of the story. Can you talk about working within the volume versus green screen, and what does it do to help an actor's performance? For this film, Thor: Love and Thunder, uh, we used the volume, which is. Uh, Basically, it's a big circular room made of LED screens, and you project your environments on the screen. So imagine, you know, a thousand televisions all in a big circle in the ceiling as well, and then you put an entire environment, 360 degrees. And what's great is it lights the characters, and the characters, the actors themselves, can see all of the stuff. They can see what the, you know, instead of a, on a green screen or a blue screen, you're asking the actors to pretend they're looking at something. 
and then you put that in later on. And so often they'll be looking at like a little dot on a green screen or a tennis ball on a stick. And then they ask, what is this? And you have to say, I don't know. It might be a dragon, but it also might be a flying dolphin. What are these ghosts we keep hearing about? There are two really great, wonderful characters in the film named Tooth Nasher and Teeth Grinder. And they are gigantic goats. And they're space goats, and they are a very important part of the film because they they drag the Viking ship that our heroes uh, uh, are on their journey on, and uh, they drag it through space. And so these goats come from, they actually come from the original Thor mythology, the Norse mythology, and they also come from the comic books. Um, so they've been around a long time, the first time in a movie. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Click and watch our suggested video playlist right now for more entertaining videos. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.